At this time, the chair will entertain nominations for the office of Speaker Pro Tempore of the House of Representatives. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and again, congratulations. Members, it is with great pleasure that I stand before you today to nominate Harold Wright as Pro Tem of the Oklahoma House of Representatives. I've served the Herald for the past four years, the last two as Speaker Pro Tem. He has served in this body since being elected in 2008. Now, because of term limits, this will be his last term, and he will be dearly missed by all of us in this body. What you may not know is that when Harold ran two years ago, I didn't support him. Now, that decision was not a decision from my heart. Politics sometimes gets in the way, as we all know. Ultimately, it worked out, and now we're on the cusp of his re-election to pro tem of the House. It's because of Representative Wright's leadership that instead of being bitter, he befriended and led those initially against him and brought them into his camp, and that included me. Call it building a team of rivals, call it building a consensus in the caucus, but he has taken that sense of leadership and carried it on the past two years. And I have been honored to serve with him in his cause and his role as pro tem of the House. Unfortunately, as I said, the 57th legislature will be his last term. But we are lucky to have him for two more years for his selfless sacrifice to this body, to his district, and this state. Now, some of you know the lighter side of Representative Wright. You may know him for his ability to read poetry from a book written by one of our former colleagues in his radio voice. Or you may know him for his tweed coats, round glasses, and when he has it, his dubious mustache. It makes him look like a permanent fixture at the 70s themed establishment down the road known as the Rockford, if many of you probably know what that is. But we also know the serious side of Harold and his dedication to the rules of decorum and this august body. The personal side of Harold Ride is no less impressive. This year, he and his wife Carol, who's sitting over here in August, will celebrate their 50th wedding anniversary. Now, Harold, that's all because of Carol, by the way, so. They've raised two successful children, Heston and Angela, Angela both over here, Angela uh, being an elected DA. And this is an important piece about the Wright family. Recently, with little fanfare, they endowed a scholarship at Southwestern Oklahoma State University. Now, many of us in this body would take that opportunity to do a press release and talk about how great we are and all the great things that, that, we, that we do. Uh, the Wrights don't do that. They, they do the right thing for the right reasons at the right time, and just to be cheesy with the W on the, the front of the right. If you didn't know, Harold is also a member of the Oklahoma Association of Broadcasters Hall of Fame. Again, many of you don't know that because Harold does not talk about himself. He cares about others and his self a sacrifice and what he does. It is the full embodiment of Harold Wright that we know and love that makes him perfect for the job of pro tem in the House of Representatives. He's one of those weird folks that owns a Ford Thunderbird and a Chevy Corvette. He knows how to embrace both sides. There may be debate on each side. He'll fall on the right side. He'll serve each and every person in this body, whether you're a Republican or you're a Democrat. And as you know, there are some people who believe he is a man without a party, but he's still our pro tem and someone that we all love, know, and respect for what he does. 
Now, you don't need me to tell you that Harold is the most qualified for this job. But it did give me the opportunity to tell you a few things about our colleague. Some of you, you may have known, some may not have known. There are others that, other things you might want to know that I'm not going to discuss here, but you can catch me after and I'll, I'll catch you up. So, now I, honestly, I'm kidding. The, look, it is extremely humbling for me to nominate Harold Wright, my dear friend, and your pro tem, to be the next pro tem of Oklahoma House of Representatives. Representative Baker, you are recognized to second the nomination. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members, it is my honor today to second the nomination of my colleague and friend, Representative Harold Wright of Weatherford, a speaker pro tem of the House of Representatives. I had the pleasure of meeting Representative Wright on the campaign trail in July of 2016. Representative Wright had reached out to me, and I didn't know him, he didn't know I. I think that he was just very curious as to what this teacher from UConn was really going to do uh, coming up here and, and running for office. He told me that he didn't want to take up much of my time just to come from knocking doors, and so we met at the McDonald's in El Reno. Now, because it was July, you all remember, uh, I was pretty sweaty, and I was very concerned about what this gentleman must think of me uh, coming straight off the doorstep. I had not been around very many elected officials before, and it was pretty intimidating to me. I wanted to make a great impression, but I was very concerned. All I wanted to do was go into that McDonald's and sit down in the air conditioning for a little bit and just have a conversation. Well, I will tell you that I remember immediately feeling very at ease by his presence. We engaged in a conversation that was enlightening to me. Not only did Representative Wright seem to have a genuine interest in my well-being as a candidate, he answered all of my questions with honesty and clarity. After that, he and his wonderful wife, Carol, were so kind that they took me out a couple of nights knocking doors. Carol would be the driver, Harold and I would, he would take one side of the street, I would take another. Once we'd get in the car, we would talk about all the different people we had met, and the one thing that I remember was Carol and Harold reassuring me that this job could be performed well as long as my heart was in the right place and my work ethic was strong. These past two years have been the most difficult yet fulfilling times I have experienced in my career. Representative Wright has always been diligent in checking on the well-being of my classmates and I to make sure that we were handling the stress and pressure that comes with this honorable position. I greatly appreciated every time he would put his head in my office and say, how are you holding up? You doing okay? And there were many days that I wanted to say, now Harold, this is not what you told me it was going to be. But I didn't, and I always appreciated him. This is the one thing that I will tell you about this man that I call my friend. Relationships are vital in this position, and he understands the value in building and maintaining them. He maintains a quiet confidence that I admire. His confidence does not require bravado, swagger, or self-regard, but the ability to listen to members and to provide support of them when needed. We are surrounded daily by people that are crying to have their opinions validated, and they desire to be the center of attention. Yet I believe a true leader defines himself by allowing the spotlight to shine on others and to applaud the successes of others before themselves. Representative Wright has set this example for us. I offer my appreciation for your wisdom, 
your calm, your steady demeanor in command of us, your team, through respect rather than force of character. To conclude, I am humbled and I am extremely honored to second the nomination of Representative Harold Wright as Speaker Pro Tem in the House of Representatives. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my distinct honor to announce that the Representative Harold Wright has been elected Speaker Pro Tem of the House of Representatives for the 57th Oklahoma Legislature. That was a great example of bipartisanship. Thank you, Representative Goodwin. Speaker Pro Tem Wright, you're recognized. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much, uh, Representative Goodwin, for returning my talk. I appreciate that very much. I thought for a moment I'd been sabotaged by somebody. You know, I want to thank, first of all, constituents from District 57 for electing me to represent them in Western Oklahoma. It's just a, a great honor. And I don't know about you, but I still get my, the hair on the back of my neck still uh, raises uh, when I come down Lincoln Boulevard looking at the Capitol. And I hope that I will continue to have that happen. And, uh, and if you're not, if that doesn't happen to you when you come to the Capitol, then you might not want to be here. I just think it's a tremendous honor to serve in this wonderful capacity. Uh, and I want to thank my family for being here today. Uh, my wife, Carol, who we met 50 years ago in college at Southwestern attending speech class together, and I was so impressed with her speech that I decided I wanted to date her, and we later got married. So uh, we are celebrating our 50th anniversary, like uh, Representative Kennedy said this year, and it's just really been great. And uh, she's been tremendous support uh, for me throughout my career, not only in the, 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 the legislature, but also in broadcasting. So thank you. And I, many of you may know my daughter, Angela Marcy. I'm so proud of her. She, she uh, <laughs> is the district attorney for our district out in Western Oklahoma. It covers five counties, so it's a huge uh, district from the standpoint of land size. And uh, so she does a great job. She just got elected. Her second term was sworn in yesterday as our district attorney. So Angela, I'm very proud of you. Thank you for what you do. My son is here, and Heston is uh, the, the owner, part owner with me of our radio property in Weatherford, our newspaper there, and he is the guy back behind the scenes that has enabled me to be up here and, and do my job in the legislature. I couldn't do this without his support back home, so uh, Heston, thank you very much for that. Thank you. You see, he surprised me today. I didn't think he was coming. He told me yesterday I can't be there. And so I said, okay, you know, that's all right if you can't be here. But my granddaughters weren't going to be able to be here, but one of them is, and that's, she's been up here since she was four the first time when I came in, and now she's 14. So I'm proud of her for being here today. Thank you, Abby, for joining us. Appreciate it. My assistant, Dee Lemon, many of you know Dee because you work with her. See her 411 when you come by, but she is so great as my assistant. I've been fortunate, this is my third term to work with her as my assistant. And so thank you, Dee Lemon, for being who you are. I'd also like to thank Representative Kennedy and also Representative Baker for, for their wonderful and kind com comments and their nominating speeches. And I'd, I'd like to really thank this caucus for your unanimous, unanimous support as my, for me being your, your pro tem. Thank you very much. You know, it's a great honor to serve and to be elected again as the Speaker pro tem. I'm proud to, to represent the entire body 
here today, including Democrats. As I, I believe that even though our election somewhat is partisan, I represent the entire body. I want to thank the Speaker for, for being elected, or congratulate you for being elected, and wish you the very best. And I'll be here to help you in any way I possibly can. I think you know that. But also would like to thank our staff uh, in the House for the job they do. Uh, we have the staff behind us that's here helping the pro tem and the speaker and all the presiding officers, the chief clerk, the parliamentarian, and all of their staff and the staff in the House. So Stu's in the back taking pictures. Let's appreciate the staff here in the House for the great job they do. Thank you. Thank you. I'm proud to represent the body, the House, because this is the people's <coughs> House, which makes it even more meaningful to me. You see, Democrats, I promise to be responsible and to be fair in my rulings as presiding officer and in the leading our presiding officer team. I don't know if you realize this or not, but. I think most of us do, that it's all kind of a matter of perspective, right? Um, we don't always see things the same. Let me illustrate. I was recently watching a basketball game at Southwestern, and there were these two little boys standing beside me, and they were looking up at me. And uh, I was looking at them and wondering what they were thinking, and one of them finally looked up and said, are you old? It's okay to laugh, you know, because it got worse. It got worse. Uh, I said, well, I'm really not that old. Why do you ask? And one of them, this little boy, said, because you have a wrinkled neck. <laughs> so that's what happens, you see, because I'm really not that old. Uh, but this place can certainly wear on you a little bit, right? I mean, when I was elected 10 years ago, I looked like Kyle Hilbert. <laughs> well, at least I thought I did, Kyle. Uh, the point is that you're never too old and you're never too young to make a difference, right? Members, listen, this is the first day the first day, I know that might be a little trite, but it's the first day of the rest of your career as a legislator. The, the first day, this is it. So we need to stop and ask ourselves two questions. What type of legislator will we be? Okay, what type of legislator are we gonna be? And secondly, will we be a part of the problem or will we be a part of the solution? And I think that's something we all have to ask ourselves in life when we're approaching almost anything. Since we have 46 new members and over 70% of the body were elected in the last couple of years, this message is somewhat directed to you, but it also is directed, I think, to you senior members as well. During my first year, I was working on a bill with the judiciary chairman, it was Rex Duncan at the time, and he really made me th jump through the hoops. I was surprised. It was my, one of my first bills, and it was related, related to DUIs, and he made me jump through the hoops to get the bill right and get the bill in order before he would even hear it. He made the comment during my conversation with him at the time, he said, you know, he said, when you come in here, it doesn't take very long to define who you are. Think about that for a minute. It doesn't take long by your actions and what you do to define who you are. The way you act and the job you do in this legislature for your constituents and passing legislation will be defined, I think, by your integrity and character. And those words have been used a lot here today in a lot of different ways. But I think most of you who've been here, the senior members would agree with that. I'd like to offer three suggestions to all of us today. First of all, that we work hard. Dale Carnegie said, I know people in the ranks are gonna stay in the ranks. Why? Simply because they don't have the ability to get things done. I think hard work 
a strong work ethic is a good reason and a good way to get things done. A good example of that for me was a member of my class. Many of you remember him, uh, Jason Nelson. Representative Nelson represented part of Oklahoma City, and he came in as a freshman. He had been in Governor Keating's office, and he came in, and he was a ball of fire, worked really hard. But his first term, he passed some legislation that was called the, the uh, Nicole Henry Scholarship. And it, it was quite a deal because he worked with the Democrats as well, and Democrat uh, Governor Henry at the time to get that scholarship passed. And it's made a significant difference in the lives of children with learning disabilities. Hard work is great and something you ought to do. The second thing I hope, I think, you, is to be resourceful and to be a contributor to the body. Um, a resource is important. Many of us come from different walks of life, right? For me, it's a, being a radio broadcaster. Uh, others, it's different. Um, but you can be a great resource. A good example for me and one of my uh, colleagues was uh, Dennis uh, Casey from, I think, Ty, see, uh, Ty Burns is replacing Dennis. But Dennis came from, as a coach, as superintendent, and he was great. He was my go-to guy for education when I needed help, and particularly on the, the funding formula and those kind of things. So be a resource and be a contributor. And the third thing, and I'm a big team guy, you know, in the radio business, you have to work together as a team to get things done. And, and someone, I, I think Gary Bands, I heard him say this, he's a great basketball coach, he said, there's no I in team, right? It's all about working together. And, and so, to me, one of the good examples of a great team player was Earl Sears. And he, he turned out last year, but Earl, oftentimes asked questions in caucus. Sometimes uh, he was all, sometimes in disagreement on things. However, when it came down to the important bottom line, he was always a team player. So those are some examples of people I've looked up to since I've been in the legislature, and I hope that you have people like that that you can look up to as well. You know, when you think about it, we're all uh, either Democrats or we're Republicans, but would you agree that we're first Oklahomans? <laughs> and although we disagree, we're really on the same team. The same team working to make Oklahoma better. The speaker alluded to that earlier, and I think it's wise that we work towards making Oklahoma better. As a matter of fact, I think that's what our constituents demand, really, when you get down to it. I hear a lot of people complaining about the federal issues and the fact that the federal legislators don't work together like we'd like for them to. And I think that Oklahomans can feel the same way sometimes. So we do need to work together, but because we are on the, the same teams. Some of you are senior members, and I would just say that we need as senior members to set a good example in the way we act and serve others. My first couple of years in the legislature, I watched Sue Tibbs and Minority Leader Danny Morgan as they worked together on legislation against texting and driving. No matter our age or how long we've been here, we need to work together to have a successful legislature and make Oklahoma like the governor wants to be a top 10 state. Both parties can work across party lines to get policy and budget adopted and in a timely manner, I might add. And we're gonna work on that. I think leadership is committed to getting us out here and passing our budget in a timely manner. You know, this is a challenge, and it's a challenging year. Uh, I think, you know, you've heard some of the items that the, the, the speaker had addressed, and I'm certainly in favor of, of working in those areas like education to make, make us number one in pay. When I met with teachers in my office last year, that was one of their greatest concerns was that, what are you going to do next year, and how can we improve on where we are this year? And I made a commitment to my constituents that we would try to maybe put the raise in on a, at least maybe an annual basis to meet at least the cost of living or something along that line. And I think if we make that kind of commitment, then we won't get in the same boat we were in this year, not having a raise for teachers for 10 years and dropping to last in the region. Now we're second or third. We need to continue to maintain at least that or move on up to first like the, the uh, speaker suggested. This year's uh, interesting because of the marijuana vote in, 
in uh, June. We need to address the, the regulation of marijuana with a fine line drawn between the regulation and the vote of the people to allow the access for legal medical marijuana. The nonpartisan committee will be coming to the House, made up of both the Senate, House, Democrats, and Republicans, to offer some legislation. My hope is that we can work together to provide the necessary framework to implement meaningful law. It also appears that we have a surplus of revenue for the first time in several years. I don't know about you, but this has been tough for me. This is my 10th year. We've only had like one year where we maybe had a little extra money. Every other year from the time I started until just last year, we were really strapped, and it meant cutting budgets. It reminds me of when I was a young boy. My dad was a school teacher, um, and his first contract was like $2,800 a year to be a school teacher out at Erie. But we always had fried chicken or roast on Sunday at noon. And there was always a fight over who could get the extra piece of fried chicken. Well, this year we'll have extra money, I think, for the first time. And there will be a fight to see who gets more. Unfortunately, there's not enough to go around, and some people will be unhappy. At least we have more, and that's much better than the past. So that's good news, isn't it? You know, you could give some to my daughter's DA counsel. That might help a little bit. Or maybe the roads in western Oklahoma. Anyway, Mr. Chairman Wallace, the list goes on and on, doesn't it? It's a tough job. Representative, Chairman. Wallace, you're, you're, you got a tough job ahead of you because I've had members in the past tell me it's harder when we have money than it is when we don't. So we'll see what happens. Seriously, there's a lot of needs and the challenge is working together to provide for a better and more productive state government. In closing, I'd like to refer to the Bible. This is one that I got several years ago uh, and I've made notes in it, but one of my favorite Bible verses is Mike 6, 8. Now I have this on my wall in my, my place, the place where I live, and I, I look at it every day, but I think it's apropos for the legislature. This is the Revised Standard Version, but it says, do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with your God. And I really like um, Eugene Peterson's interpretation from the message, and it goes like this. But he's already made it plain how to live and what to do. What God is looking for in men and women, well, it's quite simple. Do what is fair and just to your neighbor. Be compassionate and loyal in your love. And this is the best part, and don't take yourself too seriously. Take God seriously. May God bless the state of Oklahoma and the United States of America. Thank you.